Hi there, I'm Alex Shea, I'm 24 years old, and back in 2009 I graduated from this wonderful institution with a mechanical engineering degree. And you're probably wondering now why on earth I have this hideous monstrosity up on the screen. And this hideous monstrosity is the only electric car you could have bought back in 2009. And I wanted to change the perception, I want to smash down the, map, the barriers surrounding uh, people's perception of not buying electric cars. So I put together a team of very talented engineers, all from Imperial College, to help change this public perception. And then you'll see, we had to come up with a project to really inspire and engage people to take note of this project and to really learn what we are talking about. So we came up with the Pan American Highway. It's the longest road in the world, 26,000 kilometers long, from Alaska to Argentina, 14 countries. And to do this, we wanted to build the longest range electric car in the world. And it also had to be sexy. People were looking at these gee whizzes and thinking, hold on, I'm never going to want to buy or drive one of these things. So we needed something that when it was driving along the road, people would say, wow, what on earth is this contraption? So in August 2009, we started designing and building this car from scratch. And it wasn't easy. We had to build in the world's largest battery pack for a road-going electric vehicle. 54 kilowatt hours, a lot of time and expertise and dedication went into making that mess of wires actually work. Um, <laughs> there were a lot of wires and connections. But we persevered, carried on building, carried on testing, and towards March 2010, we actually had something which was working. And we put it on a dynamometer, which is essentially a rolling road. This is uh, a picture of it there, and you can actually see us taking out a box which had recently exploded. So it wasn't all uh, plain sailing, but eventually we got this car running. 500 kilometers, over 500 kilometers on a single charge, 160 kilometers an hour top speed, 400 horsepower in the back. And in uh, April 2010, we had the car road legalized. That's what it looked like. I still maintain it's the sexiest looking electric car on the road today. Shortly after this, we became the first electric car in the world to circumnavigate the M25 twice on a single charge, and then the first electric car to go from London to Paris on one single charge. That's over 290 miles. So we thought then we were ready to go off to Alaska. And this is a picture of us starting off in the wilderness. I mean, this place is in the middle of nowhere. You've just got this road in the middle of the forest. If something goes wrong, you are screwed. There is nobody else to help you. So we carried on down through Alaska, Canada, United States, and the next picture you'll see here is us going along the famous Route 66 on the way to Las Vegas, where we did spend a very enjoyable night, I'm pleased to say. And you know we were on the top of the world. We'd done 8,000 kilometers. We were feeling really confident. Everything's going great. And then we hit Mexico. And Boy, did we hit it hard. The next picture you'll see is us being stopped just five minutes into the country, five minutes, honestly, by three police cars. And they weren't very uh, happy with uh, this car going through what is the world's most dangerous location. More murders per year there than Afghanistan and Iraq combined. It's a pretty dangerous place. We didn't really want to hang around there for very long. So we continued down the road. And by road, I use that term quite loosely because some roads aren't, well, really roads. This is a picture in Ecuador where it's literally a sand track strewn with rocks. We had a ground clearance of just three inches, so some of these rocks did hurt the car, believe me. And we had these huge trucks bombing past us, and navigating through those was quite a challenge. And as with long journeys, the statistics of having a crash are actually pretty high, and crash we did. Not on the road, ironically. Actually, we were doing a demonstration at a university, not unlike this one, in Quito, and one of the team members was driving the car, had a full frontal collision. Now, we managed to repair that in six days, which was quite a feat, and the team really worked hard together. And the, the flip side, the good thing about crashing, is that there were hundreds and hundreds of people watching, and they had cameras and video cameras, and that story went out around South America like wildfire. Literally one hour later, we were getting calls from Peru, Argentina, Chile, guys, are you gonna make it? Are you gonna make it to the press events? Are you gonna make it to the finish? Um, we did, of course. And so another 8,000 kilometers long, we start going into Tierra del Fuego, which is an island at the bottom of the world. You can see the road just disappears into a gravel strip, and you just wind your way through endless fields. And the feeling really is that you are at the end of the world. There really is nothing left. Eventually, we reach Ushuaia, which is the southernmost city in the world. Literally, that sea there, the next bit of land after that sea is Antarctica. So it really, really is right at the bottom. And that was November the 16th, 2010, and we really had completed the longest and hardest road in an electric car across all types of terrain and climates. So what did we actually achieve with this journey? 
Was it just a jolly? Was it just a holiday? Uh, no, it wasn't. What we like to think is that we really help change the public perception of electric vehicles. And secondly, and, and more important to me, we help encourage and inspire children to take up science and technology subjects in their education. We just don't have enough people doing it these days. We really wanted people to take this up. And it wasn't just children. Thousands upon thousands of adults were seeing this car as we went down the Pan American Highway. And you could see in their eyes, the moment we said, no, this is not a petrol car, this is an electric car, and it goes faster than any car you've ever driven, they were like, wow. Even petrol heads were completely and utterly converted. And so what I like to think is that with this little car and this very long road, we really helped made a change in the way people think about the future of our public transportation. And I'd like to think that with this talk, uh, I have made that change for you too. Thank you very much.